Hello and welcome to all the brain lovers. I'm here to provide my channel's first audiobook on the topic occipital lobes. I'm using a book named as Fundamentals of Human Neuropsychology by Dr. Brian Kolb and Dr. Ian Kuvisha. I found this book very useful in terms of explanation and the type of words used. This is the first part of the occipital lobe series. Let my Broca's area and your temporal lobes get inside the occipital lobes. Chapter 13 The Occipital Lobes PM, a colonel in the British Army who fought in North America during the Second World War, was stuck by a bullet that went through the back of his brain. Miraculously, PM survived but his vision was severely affected. He completely lost sight in the right visual field but the central part of his left visual field survived. He reported that he could see normally in the region of the left visual world that was about the diameter of your fist held at the arm's length directly in front of your face. PM symptoms reveal a topographical map of the visual world in the occipital cortex and the possibility of seeing through only a small part of it. But what did PM experience in the rest of the visual world? Shortly after his injury, he reported that the lost world appeared black as though the lights were out. Occasionally, however, he was aware that the lost regions were different, almost grey, although he could never express specifically what exactly was different other than the greyness. PM also experienced a phenomena that many patients with extensive visual field defects experience. If asked to guess whether a spot of light had blinked in his blind field, he could guess at above chance levels. He was not consciously aware that the light had appeared and seemed bemused when he could guess, sometimes quite accurately, about the presence or absence of the light. In spite of his residual central vision, PM had two particular problems. He found it very difficult to read and he had difficulty in recognizing faces. Curiously, however, PM could recognize other objects more easily even though he could not see any more of them than he could the faces. Cases such as PM's are especially interesting because our brains are organized around vision. Our perception of the world is predominantly visual. Our movements are guided by visual information. Our social and sexual behavior is highly visual. Our entertainment is largely visual and our nights are enriched by the visual dreams. In this chapter, we first consider the anatomical organization of the occipital lobes and then examine the extent of the visual system within the brain. Next, we examine disorders of the visual pathways and of the visual system. We shall see why faces present a special problem for the visual system and why the ability to visualize presents humans a unique opportunity. Anatomy of the Occipital Lobes The occipital lobes form the posterior pole of the cerebral hemispheres, lying under the occipital bone at the back of the skull. On the medial surface of the hemisphere, the occipital lobe is distinguished from the parietal lobe by the parieto-occipital sulcus. No clear landmarks separate the occipital cortex from the temporal or the parietal cortex on the lateral surface of the hemisphere. However, because the occipital tissue merges with the other regions. The lack of clear landmarks makes it difficult to define the extent of the occipital areas precisely and has led to much confusion about the exact boundaries. Within the visual cortex, however, there are three clear landmarks. The most prominent is the calcarine sulcus, which contains much of the primary cortex. The calcarine fissure divides the upper and the lower halves of the visual world. On the ventral surface of the hemisphere are two gyri, lingual and the fusiform. The lingual gyrus includes parts of the visual cortical regions V2 and Vp, whereas V4 is in the fusiform gyrus. Subdivisions of the occipital cortex The monkey cortex was first divided by Broadmans into three regions areas 17, 18, and 19. But studies using imaging, physiological, and newer anatomical techniques have produced much finer subdivisions. Although the map is still not complete, the consensus is that the occipital cortex contains at least nine different visual areas. 
वी वन वी टू वी थ्री वी पी वी थ्री ए वी फोर डी वी फोर वी डी पी एंड एम टी द लोकेशन ऑफ सम ऑफ दीज एरियाज ऑन द लेटल सर्फेस ऑफ द मंकी ब्रेन एज वेल एज देर लोकेशन ऑन अ टू डिमेंशनल फ्लैट एंड मैप दैट इंक्लूड बोथ द लेटरल एरियाज एंड दोज लोकेटेड ऑन द मीडियल सर्फेस ऑफ द हेमस्फेयर आर शोन इन मैक्सिम ऑफ द इमेज ऑफ द ब्रॉडमेंट एरियाज द प्रिसाइज लोकेशन ऑफ द ह्यूमन होमोलॉग्स आर स्टिल नॉट सेटल्ड but a map constructed by total and hadjikani that includes all of the monkey areas as well as the additional color sensitive area v8 some of the areas contain a complete visual field whereas other have only an upper and lower visual field the distinction is curious and previk has suggested that the upper and the lower visual fields may have different functions with the upper more specialized for visual search and recognition and the lower more specialized for visual motor guidance a remarkable feature of the area v1 is its complex laminar organization it is probably the most distinct of all the cortical areas although we usually say that the cortex has six layers it is possible to see many more in area v1 partly because layer 4 alone features four distinct four distinct layers another surprising feature of area v1 is that although it appears to be anatomically homogeneous it can be shown to actually be heterogeneous by staining it for the enzyme cytochrome oxidase which is crucial in making energy available to the cells regions of cytochrome rich areas known as blobs are separated by interblob regions of little cytochrome activity It turns out that cells in the blobs take part in color perception and the interblobs have a role in form and motion perception. The discovery that area V1 is functionally heterogeneous that a given cortical area may have more than one distinct function was unexpected. It turns out that area V2 also is heterogeneous when stained with cytochrome oxidase but instead of blobs stripes are revealed. One type the thin stripe takes part in color perception two other types known as thick stripes and pale stripes have role in form and motion perception thus we see that heterogeneity of function observed in area v1 representing color form and motion is presented in area v2 although it is organized in a different way the distribution of color function across much of the occipital cortex and beyond that is areas v1 v2 v4 and v8 is important because until recently the perception of form or movement was believed to be color blind it has now become clear that the color vision is integral to the analysis of the position depth motion and structure of the objects A key point here is that although the relative amount of color processing certainly varies across occipital regions with the area V4 having color processing as its major functions the processing of color related information does more than simply allow us to tell red from green the appreciation of color also enriches our capacity to detect motion depth and position In the absence of significant color analysis dogs and cats thus not only see an essentially black and white world but have reduced visual capacities more generally as well An example of the advantage of color vision can be seen in the type of photoreceptors in primates Sumner and Molen found that color system of primates is optimized for differentiating edible fruits from a background of leaves This ability to differentiate is an important advantage when having to select edible fruits from a complex scene and is especially important when the fruits are partly occurred by leaves which is fairly common. In fact, color provides important information for object recognition in such cases. A partly occluded yellow banana is quickly seen whereas a gray banana would be difficult to detect in a black and white scene. connections of the visual cortex by the late 90s the consensus was that the visual cortex is hierarchically organized with the visual information proceeding from area 17 to area 18 and to the area 
Each visual area was thought to provide some sort of elaboration on the processing of the preceding area. The strictly hierarchical view is now considered too simple and has been replaced by the notion of a distributed hierarchical process with multiple parallel and interconnecting pathways at each level. There is still a hierarchy for vision, but with separate functions, the details of all the connections between the occipital areas and from them to the parietal, temporal and frontal regions are bewildering, but it is possible to extract a few simple principles, and they are as following. V1 the stride cortex. V1 is the primary vision area. It receives the largest input from the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus and it projects to all the other occipital regions. V1 is the first processing level in the hierarchy. Second, V2. V2 also projects to all the other occipital regions. V2 is the second level. Third, after V2, Three distinct parallel pathways emerge en route to the parietal cortex, superior temporal sulcus and inferior temporal cortex for further processing. As we shall see in more detail shortly, the parietal pathway or the dorsal stream has a role in the visual guidance of movement. And the inferior temporal pathway or the ventral stream is concerned with the object's perception, including color. The middle pathway along the superior temporal sulcus is probably important in visuospatial functions. This is the end of today's session. Today we covered the introduction of the occipital lobes, anatomy of the occipital lobes, subdivisions of the occipital cortex and connections of the visual cortex. In the next session we will cover a theory of occipital lobe function visual functions beyond the occipital lobe, vision for action, action for vision, visual recognition, visual space, visual attention, visual pathways beyond the occipital lobe and the imaging studies of dorsal and ventral steams. If you want an audiobook of your choice, put that topic in the comment section. I'd love to make the audiobook on that topic. See you soon.